G'day everybody. G'day. So some of you will know sort of what my main background is, which is predominantly copywriting, and I've I can probably safely say I've generated over a billion dollars in sales for my clients that I can track and or myself. Probably my biggest win was a client in the weight loss industry who I took from 125 million to 400 plus in two years. Right, by getting the offer right and also getting the freaking the message right, okay? What do, you, what do you have as clients? You have men and you have women, right? Predominantly maybe who has more women clients, who has more men? Who has more women? Okay, men, a couple of people. Is your message the same? Is your marketing message the same to both sexes? If it is, you've got to freaking change that. Because you'll find by doing some digging and doing research and proper profiling, women will come to you for a certain reason and men will come to you for something different. So when you can really dig deep and find out what the true reason is and then put that into your message and your copy, etc., you're going to close more business. Now, marketing incest, um, it's something I first come across from a guy called Dan Kennedy, who Justin's very familiar with, Stephen's very familiar with. When I first got into copywriting in 2001, I shelled out $25,000 on an Amex card, because I didn't have any money left after the first dragon, I mean the first divorce, and bought the non-exclusive resale rights to all of his products and books. And of course, the bill was due in a month, right? And I managed to pay it quite well, right? But one of the things I learned from him, what he talked about is people do advertising incest and marketing incest. In other words, you're doing the same shit as everybody else. And I've seen a lot, I mentioned this to Justin, what, last time maybe, about the, I've seen a lot of the fit pros constantly doing marketing incest online. They're saying pretty much the same thing as everybody else, right? You've got to get your point of difference, right? Because, and again, this is not my question, right? But I'm gonna ram it down your throats and please write it down, because this is what your ideal prospect is asking you. It doesn't matter what business you're in, okay? It's why should I choose to do business with you over and above any and every other competitor in your industry? Right? Whether it's me as a copywriter, Justin as a fit pro coach wanker, right? Or Stephen in his business, or Simon, or you in your business, right? Why should I choose to do business with you over and above any and every other competitor out there? And when you can answer that to the best of your ability through everything you do, through your message, whether it be a video, a post, sales copy, talking to somebody face to face, what do you think will happen? You'll close more business, right? So one of the things that I want to talk to you about a lot, right, is stories, right? If we go back to caveman days, and it was sexist at the time, but I mean, ever since the caveman first dragged his woman by the hair and pulled her into the cave for sex, what's been happening? People have been telling stories. From the moment you're conceived, your mother, predominantly, has told stories while you were growing. When you were born, what happened? Stories. When you went to kindergarten, stories. When you went to elementary school or primary school, same thing, right? Stories all the way through. Who's got kids in the room? You tell them stories? Okay. When you're in the pub, do you tell stories or somebody tell you a story? Right? Story selling, right? Story sell, right? So you've got to get good at telling stories or at least have a crack at it, okay? So every single day, somewhere around you, whether it's in person, on Facebook, on a social media site, on a website, or someone tells you about something, you want to start to be conscious of how can you take that event or that story or that thing you witnessed and turn it into a story to sell your products or services. Okay, so last Sunday I was in Glasgow at um, Dino and Simon's event, which a few people know, know Dino, and we're at this uh, brew dog place having lunch. And we're crammed, like four of us this side, four that side in a booth that should take three right, because the place was full. And so I'm here, and the mirror up there, I happen to look up, and here is a birthday party, all right? But have a guess what sort of birthday party it was. The fucking white poodle dog birthday party. <laughs> Complete with all the hats and bullshit, and the balloons, 
and dogs are all over the table and I had to go pee so of course the entry to the gents is behind the table so I'm looking and there's about 10 to 12 dogs right and as I'm taking a slash they start singing happy birthday and when I went back outside one of the boys at our table said the dog even tried to blow the candle out right now the good thing is that those women at the party didn't give a fuck what anybody else thought right so if you're in, you're in mindset stuff right so imagine you know you even relaying the full story that I'm telling you now to get into the point was the women didn't care about their surround and they didn't give a shit right and then how you could sell it into a into a call or, or some other service right and so you know they eventually left right and of course we took photos why not so we could write stories about it now I put that in my group okay uh, Rob was sitting beside me did an email about it because we're in tune of stuff that happens around us that we can turn into a story it could be good service somewhere bad service right you might start to think of shit something happened six months ago that I can now turn into a story to generate you know content for a blog email your audience put it in a post does that make sense right so what I'd like you to start to do is you know I mean make a note of it now but then just grab a freaking notepad or do it on the, do it on your laptop and start to think of things like that and be like your birthday dog story right and make a list so you've got future content you should never ever be without content right then all you have to do is segue the story into the next step whether it's the offer to buy click the link fill out a form get on a call very clear on that okay in my own case uh, years ago I was um, sitting at home on a Sunday morning after a big night out in the booze before in Toronto where I lived at the time and I start watching a show called the Drug Enforcement Agency right reality TV show and as I'm watching it half dying um, they did something which I related back to marketing so let's say Justin was the, the criminal, the first one caught, right? Justin gets arrested and the chief cop's like, hey, hey Justin, and he's handcuffed, probably losing bodily functions. Um, we've got enough drugs to put you away for 25 years to life. However, we can make this look like a Sunday school picnic, right? In other words, a parking ticket. All you have to do is arrange for us to meet with your supplier. In other words, you call up your, your drug dealer as though you want to go and score and we'll do a sting. That's all you have to do. Now it sounds simple, right? Except you've been arrested and every time you call your drug dealer, if, if your voice isn't the same, if there's anything slightly off, guess what? They're going to know something's up. So this happens, so Justin decides to dob in Simon. Simon's his supplier, right? Next part of the show, same thing happens, right? Same offer is made to Simon. You've been spying on us? I have, I have. <laughs> right. And so they say to Simon, all right, again, same deal. Give us your supply and this will be it will be nothing. So he arranges Sting for Stephen. And Stephen goes down. Now I'm watching this show. What do I get out of this being a copywriter and marketer? Right? They're making an offer. It's a limited offer. And it's got a takeaway sale. It's got an expiration date. Here's the offer. You've got one minute to decide. If not, this is what's going to happen. So instead of going, yeah, that's, that's good, great, 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 I blogged about it. I emailed my list. I made five figures from the email, right? Just from taking a story, banging it out, and hitting send, right? I've since retreaded that story many times. I just adjusted it was yesterday to like 2008, adjust the copy a little bit, and I make money every time. Right, you can retread stories as well. Make sense? I used your uh, tale of two people story again the other day. Oh yeah. The tale I always, once a year I always do that. I did it with a with a yoga instructor actually. Mm -hmm. So legit story about a month over a month ago. I had two yoga instructors asked about working with me, mm -hmm. and um, you know they both asked like, well, your your thing is mostly for gyms and fitness guys. Will it work for yoga? And one of them, the, the mindset difference here. One of them was like. Um, the principles don't sound like it would fit yoga, so I'll try something else. The other person said, 
Um, I can see the principles look the same, so I'll give it a try. And uh, Meg, who was here last time, remember? Yeah. Um, and she's the one that now, and she's she did her offer, created an offer just like Stephen outlined, two hundred pounds in ad spend, and she sold um, thirty six clients at fifty pounds each. Wow. I saw. I mean, I saw the, I the post. That on, yeah. right? That's, but she did the, the the title, the Wall Street stuff. There's a tailor to yoga instructors and yeah. how it diverges and and yeah, and that brings a few more yoga instructors came forward then and said, "Wow, I didn't know it would work." So I used that copy story you gave me. Yeah, and you familiar with anyone familiar with the Wall Street Journal story? Stephen would be probably just probably us three. Uh, the Wall Street Journal used they they knocked off an advert from 1918. It's the tale of two clerks and also the tale of uh, two men who went to war, right? So it's an old advert, copywriter modelled off the story, basically it's two people and that control copy, they generated 1.4 billion US dollars in subscriptions before any copywriter could knock it off. You know what? It works, right? So basically, and to go further what Justin's saying, it's like, You've got two people that are pretty much almost identical, right? Could be the same, the same sex, similar age, or they're both married, or you know, whatever it happens to be. And basically, they've met, they meet again later. One person's going great guns, having major success, or dropped a lot of weight, or it's very fit. The other person's still fat. Blah 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 blah. What's the difference? One person signed up for your shit, the other person didn't. That's really the premise of the story, right? I think I've given you that fully in your group, but maybe I can send it if you to have the full structure of it. I've used the Wall Street Journal story for selling erection device, orgasm shit, uh, MLM, travel club, guitar lessons, you name it. Divorce women, right? Because you can really build the story quite easy as long as you know who you're selling to. And ultimately, is the loser in the story doesn't buy your product or service and the winner does. Who wants to be the loser? Nobody. So, so they sign up, right? Stories are very, very good. Um, this is a book I just gifted to Justin, but I would suggest that you get it, right? It's a guy called Simon Hartley, Two Lens of the Pool, right? And he's a sports psychologist. But here's the kicker. He was training, or he was uh, doing the, the psych stuff for uh, an English swimmer called Chris Cook, right? And after a, basically a session one day, Chris says, Chris is bitching about he's not, he's not happy with everything. And Simon said, isn't your job just to swim two lengths of the pool as fast as you can? And of course, it really dented his ego. But reality is, that's all his fucking job was. Your job is to do two lengths of the pool as fast as you can, period. Right? And when they sort of really broke down everything, and got rid of the rest of the shit in his training regime and everything else, what do you think happened to him as a swimmer? He went from being sort of average to, you know, Commonwealth Games, winning medals, Olympic finalist, etc., etc. This book goes into how you find your own two lengths of the pool, and the answer might scare you, right? But I would suggest you get it's like 10 quid, right? Or I can arrange it for you. But here's something else that you touched based on before, Right, this is a book, right, obviously, and it's ten dollars. It could be twenty dollars if it was thicker. Now, when you buy a book, it's only got a certain perceived value, right? If I said to you this book was a hundred dollars, would you think you'd buy it? Probably not, right? If I turn this book into a manual, right, same content. Turn it into a manual. Talk about what Stephen said, value stack with bonuses and maybe a you know a 30-minute session with Simon, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Pull it out for a hundred quid. It's gonna sell easily at a hundred quid compared to that at ten dollars. They did that for a client years ago, right? All by getting the offer right. She had an e-book that she had on the website for $9.95, and a physical book is $24.95. She never sold an e-book at all. Right, I literally turned her book, her ebook, into an online course, threw in a couple of interviews, which had some valuable content, and threw in uh, three 20 minute sessions with her as a bonus, right? Because they got a high value. And here's the thing 
only about 2% of people ever took her up on those bonus calls with her, right? Which isn't a problem because the 98% of people, she doesn't have to worry about. The one to 2% who make that call, what do you think then happens? They then become the higher paying client, right? And I've actually told Simon, oh, we did it last other night, and I said, this book is great. I said, but I can get you a hundred bucks, probably even two hundred dollars for that same fucking book. So, so you've got the um, USB stick as well. This is a uh, USB stick with our logo on it. This has uh, like five audio sessions. So you get people online, like, oh, I've got five audio recordings with some content. Have it free, usually. Mm -hmm. We charge 50 pounds for one of these. And they sell 50 pounds to get the same audio recordings on a, on a USB stick. Nice. High perceived value, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just as well, <clears throat> while you were telling that story, the pool, pool story, you know, mm -hmm. I, I immediately started, like, I just had that moment in my, you know, the epiphany moment in my own mind of, like, shit, what? You know, like, I filled in the blank for you, which is mm -hmm. obviously the, a key key thing here in when telling stories like that. And we we do tell stories like Trevor's talked about, but not, not as well, I'm sure. Uh, but it's the filling in of the end is what's the key. And I just, I got excited. Immediately, because I was like, oh shit, that, that's great, because I only have to focus on this now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's just so powerful, I just, just wanted to feed that back. I, I had that moment even when we were telling the story. Good stuff, mate, yeah. It, it's, you know, his book is just fucking amazing. It's it's small, it doesn't need to be any bigger, right? But, um, his book, I mean. Um, but what I want to get into next is touch base a little bit more on the offers and talk about outrageous offers, right? Myself as a copywriter, and although I don't write for clients too much anymore, I'm more mentoring other writers, is that I don't start writing any sales copy until I've worked out the offer. Until I'm satisfied with that the offer can sell at the price either the customer wants to sell it for, or what I think I can justify the price at. Right? And I spend a lot of time doing, doing research, looking for the hook, looking for the big idea, and coming up with the right offer before I start. Now, one of my clients years ago was in the pest control industry in the States and he bought, a, he bought one of my courses from me and we had the mentoring session and I came up with an idea that he was excited about but his business partner thought was fucking crazy, right? In the process of finding out through them where they get most of their business from, in this case, they, most of their referrals came from other subcontractors in different type areas, right? Um, and so he knew his lifetime value, right? He knew what the initial, obviously, client was worth in the lifetime value. And I said, all right, why don't you... I said, all these guys drive pickup trucks, right? And he's like, yep. And I said, what's the price on a brand new pickup truck? At the time, it was around 17, 18,000 US. I said, all right, um, find out how much it would be to lease. It's probably 300 bucks, $350, even if you didn't want to pay cash, right? They agreed to run this promotion, right? Here's where the outrageous offer came in. Whoever refers the most business to us in the next 30 days will get a brand new pickup truck for free. Right? His business partner thought I was crazy, but they cleared a hundred thousand profit in that month. Right? That's one example of an outrageous offer. It's good for the audio. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in your own business, right, you want to try and think of, take on what Stephen said and think, how can you make your office so outrageous that people just can't help themselves but sign up for whatever you're offering? Uh, one of my old travel club clients in the States, um, they would target people getting ripped off or being ripped off by the timeshare industry, right? And their average prices went from about four thousand to about nine and a half thousand dollars for their travel club, right? Now here was the deal: if if you, all you people will say in their room at their presentation, even if you didn't purchase their offer, um, if it was a couple, that'd just be one, right? But basically, every, every person that came or was part of a couple got given as a as a gift. A five night, six day cruise with either Royal Caribbean or Carnival Cruise Lines, right, to the value of $1,100. Right, now this is in Tampa, Florida, major cruise port, 
everyone that lived there knew that that's the genuine value, right? So they're selling basically a $4,000 to $9,500 offer. They're giving away a cruise with a known value of $1,100. How much do you think my clients had to pay for the cruise? Anyone want to throw a figure at me? $27, right? Here's why. Cruisers do not make their money on the room. They make it on booths, casinos, shopping, and shore excursions. They know their numbers, right? Numbers are critical. But in terms of this as an offer, it's like, I don't have to buy shit. I've just got to sit through 45 minutes and I'm getting a free cruise. They knew their numbers on bumps on seats, which is critical, right? They're paying $27 or something with a known perceived value over here. Now, if they had said, come to the presentation, and we're gonna give you a $27 bottle of wine, it's not so exciting, is it? And it's only worth $27, that, you're right. So you understand, see what I mean? Think about how you can come up with something that's a low cost to you, and high perceived value there. I could do a whole day just on offers I've done. Can you all see that? All right. It's two adverts, in this case it's a lead generation advert. This was one of Dan Kennedy's clients. I cannot take the claim for this, but I expand on it in depth in my own stuff. Right, so basically it's a lead generation as a call to action. 